Hello and welcome to Macros with Maithili, our weekly half-hour show where we take a dispassionate look at major macroeconomic developments in India and abroad. Well, budgets in India are always high decibel events and this year in particular the decibel level was even higher courtesy the fact that the budget really implemented the recommendations of the path-breaking 14th Finance Commission report. Well, we are very privileged to have with us this week Dr. Y.V. Reddy, the chairman of the 14th Finance Commission, who truly is a man for all seasons. So we are hoping that over the next half hour, Dr. Reddy will be able to explain to us the log logic, the rationale and how the recommendations of the 14th Finance Commission will really change the relationship, the fiscal relationship between the union and the states. Thank you so much Dr. Reddy for joining us on the show. So let me start by asking you that, you know, uh, it's been the 14th Finance Commission recommendations have been described as path breaking, game changer, leap of faith. Did you anticipate these kind of reactions when you submitted your report or did you view your recommendations as merely one more step in the natural progression of a maturing federation? No, actually, our own discussions um, essentially did not start with any reform agenda, no preference for anything. But we are particular about two or three things. One, constitution. Go back to the constitution. Second, go back to the principles of federalism. Mm -hmm. Three, look at the various committees' recommendations of uh, uh, the Committee, Poonch Committee, Sarkaraya Committee, which reflected the evolving tensions over the period or evolving issues in center state fiscal relations. Then we heard the state government's views, union government's views. We studied previous finance commission. So in a way, we approached the problem not only incrementally, mm -hmm. but from a constitutional sense, from a fundamental sense, and from a review of all the thinking process. So in that sense, the approach of the Commission was both uh, continuity, but willing to change, depending on the context. So I think... So it was very different from the way previous Commissions had looked at it? There's some differences. Always there is elements of continuity change. But in terms of approach, this was the fundamental thing. We went back into first principles only. And, say, and, and then we said that, look, we don't proceed on the assumption that a particular policy is good, particular balance is good. No, we just concentrate on the problems as pointed out by the state government. What do the state governments think of central responsibility? What do they think of the share? What does the union government think? And therefore, what our objective was to fix the problems. Mm -hmm. You fix the problems, address the problems, and arrange rebalance on that basis. Now, what does it mean? It simply meant two things. One, there is universal agreement that the distinction between plan and non-plan was artificial. Even the Dr. Angarajan Committee said it was artificial. So what should we do? Everybody agrees that it's artificial. How to operationalize? We operationalized it. Okay. So once you add, yeah, once you add uh, plan revenue expenditure, it cannot be 32. Okay. 32 was based only on non-plan revenue expenditure. If you add plan revenue expenditure, it has to increase from 32, na? Okay. So as far as the fiscal space of the center is concerned, it has not in any way come let, down. Let me, let me explain on the revenue side okay. also. On the revenue side, 32 uh, was fixed. But every time we called the 13th, all these finance commission said, it is unfair, you are not in assessors and surcharges are not uh, being shared. Mm -hmm. It is unfair. And then they requested the union government to change the constitution, mm -hmm. to amend the constitution. Mm -hmm. It has not been amended. Mm -hmm. So that is a fact. Mm -hmm. So you have to incorporate it okay. and say that there should be, if there is an element of compensation for something mm -hmm. that ought to have been done or something fair which was pointed out, so we'll keep that in view in okay. fixing the... Okay. Share. So, come, if you factor in these two, mm -hmm. then it is not that much, of, that much of a jump. Okay. Thirdly, if you just see in the recent years, the other transfers have increased a lot mm -hmm. compared to the Finance Commission mm -hmm. transfers. Now, there is a feeling that the other transfers are so large and that uh, even in other transfers, mm -hmm. earlier days there was a formula based transfer, sure. now there is non formula based transfers right. also. So there has been a general feeling in the f fiscal relations itself that the other transfers which are less formula based, more discretionary, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, have increased uh, disproportionately. Okay. So that there was a universal demand for rebalancing and the union government said we quote unquote, union said we will give more flexibility, okay. whereas the state government said who are they going to give us flexibility okay. on our return. Okay. Virtually the accusation was that finance commissions have indirectly given too much fiscal space to the union to spend money on the state subjects. Okay, okay. This is the backdrop. Mm -hmm. In this backdrop, we said some rebalancing is required. Mm -hmm. So it is not a dramatic change, okay. but it appears like a dramatic change. But if you take all this into consideration, mm -hmm. it is not just incremental, uh, it is significant, but it is not dramatic. 
So one, if, one, if one were to look at the total transfers in terms of the fiscal space available to the union and the fiscal space available to the states, there has no, been no significant change in terms of total transfers. Am I right? Let me put it slightly differently. You are right and not exactly right. You are right to the extent that in our assumptions, in our assumptions of allocating fiscal space, we have assumed that there is a total gross, we have the total union revenues. In the union revenues, we have identified the divisible pool mm -hmm. and arrived at uh, the 42 percent of the divisible pool. Then we can, correspondingly, we assumed mm -hmm. that other transfers will, other transfers will be less, mm -hmm. so that the union government space to mm -hmm. spend on its own subjects mm -hmm. is retained. Okay. So in a way, in our projections, we expected that the union government space for its own use should not be disturbed. Okay. That should be protected. So the key word is for its own use. Yes. Okay. So then the question is the transfers. Mm -hmm. In the transfers, there is since we have increased the FC transfers. Mm -hmm in the assumptions. Mm -hmm. But what will happen, what the budget should reflect is entirely for the union government. Okay. Earlier, when the other transfers increased, it was not based on the Finance Commission's recommendations. No. Finance Commission's recommendations Absolutely. are applicable only for its transfers. Absolutely. So as far as we are concerned also, what other transfers will be done is for the union government. So the union cannot complain that life has become more difficult for the union post the Finance Commission? It, they cannot complain in the, to this extent that the transfers that the union government was making outside the finance commission on which they had more discretion that is now constrained that means they cannot play politics with it now no but it depends on how you want to interpret but mm. the basic issue is that considering the resources and needs and the balance it's just a question of rebalancing so in aggregate mm. all i'm saying is in aggregate as far as projections are concerned mm -hmm. The union space for its own use has been protected mm -hmm. and we expected, we expected that as per state's expectations, aggregate transfers will be retained. Okay. By implication, mm -hmm. in the aggregate, if the aggregate transfers are retained, mm -hmm. if the finance commission transfers increase, the capacity of the union government to transfer mm -hmm. outside the finance commission okay. to the states gets restricted. In that sense, fiscal freedom. So this the, you're, you're putting it very politely, sir, fiscal freedom. I would like to put it more crudely as the ability of the union to play one state visa against another, that has come down. So overall, what has changed is the discretionary element yes. has come down. Yes. So now, it's, while it's very good that states have greater flexibility, is there not a flip side to this in the sense that there are some states which are better able to utilize this freedom that is given to them for a variety of reasons, historical, governance standards, etc. So is that uh, like a desire? outcome that the inequalities and the disparity between different parts, different states increases from the perspective of the country as a whole? Can you have an adverse fallout? Uh, there are two ways of looking at it. Uh, first, of course, you can, we can say that by giving more freedom, the less efficient states uh, will use it inefficiently. Correspondingly, the most, uh, more efficient states uh, will use it more efficiently. So on average, is it better? to transfer more or less, that's yes. one, yes. one issue. We can leave it open, mm -hmm. one can have differences. Second, even assuming that there are efficient states and inefficient states, if the, gov the moment government of India gives money, who is implementing? The same efficient or inefficient governments are implementing. But the priority is divided, decided the, by the, the union. Yes. Second, thirdly, even if the priority is decided, if you take total expenditure in education, mm. the centrally sponsored schemes comes under plan, which will be 10% of the total expenditure. Sure. They can always adjust. Sure. Adjust. So in a way, and thirdly, it is, you are saying priorities, mm. not efficiency. Mm. So what you are saying is that in your scheme of things, priorities. Mm. So operationally, mm. operationally, mm. Operationally, it is very difficult to say mm. that if there are backward states and forward states, it is better there is a centralized uh, administration of schemes than decentralization. It is very difficult to uh, continue with that uh, formulation unless there is a firm evidence. But more important, from the FFC's point of view, the FFC, 14th Finance Commission took the view that, un that neither under the constitution nor under the theory of federalism is a finance commission or uh, can a finance commission uh, uh, be sit in judgment okay. where whether union government is able to run a particular scheme better or a state government is supposed to run a scheme better. 
that is not its job. It presumes that once an allocation is given, a function is given to the state, it is supposed to be performed by it. That becomes its need. But there are standard criteria to say what are the type of schemes which can be undertaken by federal government or which can be funded by a federal government, like minimum needs, uh, externalities, and that has to be provided, uh, that has to be accommodated by the union government, and there is plenty of space for that in the in this, in this so space So essentially program. your report debunks the theory that either the union knows better or the finance commission knows better. Your fundamental article of faith is that the states know best what no, is good for them. No. Union, states, local bodies, all of them under the constitution, under the law, are elected representatives. They are under the law, they are equal and nobody has business to assume that one layer of government mm -hmm. is superior than okay. another layer of government. Okay. So, uh, your view really is that the states as well as the union are completely equal partners and it is not that the union stands in judgment over what is a national priority also, even though actually the fundamental... A, nation, a national, uh, if you take, that's another interesting point, a directive principle of a state policy. It is not a directive principle for union policy. That is true. Therefore, it is equally binding on the states. Eh? And the states have an equal responsibility. It is inappropriate to absolve them of the responsibility. Mm -hmm. It is encroaching on a territory if the center assumes mm -hmm. that because it is a national priority, it is a union subject. I think that is a fundamental mistake. Well, I'm afraid on that note, Dr. Reddy, I'll have to interrupt you because we have to slip into a very short break. But please do stay with us. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. You're watching Macros with Nicely and we're discussing the implications of the recommendations of the 14th Finance Commission with none other than the chairman of the 14th Finance Commission, Dr. Y.V. Reddy. So another aspect that the Finance Commission was required to look into was the entire issue, idea of a fiscal discipline, drawing up a fiscal roadmap, etc. A, my question is, were you disappointed that the budget this year did not really, you know, follow the roadmap that you had given? They had taken some more time, that is at the central, at the union level. And the second question to you is that despite the emphasis on fiscal discipline, why is it that in the, deciding the horizontal grants, you reduce the weightage for fiscal discipline from 17.5 in the 13th Finance Commission to zero in your report? It is, uh, I think you have to read the formula carefully. It is not a fiscal discipline. It was supposed to be reflected in the fiscal capacity distance, it's okay. a fairly complicated uh, okay. formula. Mm -hmm. And one of the two, two important things, mm -hmm. first and most important is, mm -hmm. complication mm -hmm. is not an end in itself, it may be elegant. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to ultimately also explain to the states what mm -hmm. we are doing. Mm -hmm. And what is fiscal discipline, whether it's 2% is 1%. So the limited point, what we said is, and we reverted to up to 12 finance commission. Okay. Incidentally, on this, mm -hmm. we followed the practice up to 12. Okay. Only 13th Finance Commission introduced that. Mm. And it is fairly simple. It is uh, uh, fiscal capacity mm. uh, distance. We have taken mm. the distance. Mm. So as far as the indicator is concerned, mm. and if you actually translate and make an analysis, mm -hmm. this is simple, mm. transparent, mm -hmm. and historically well-established criteria. Okay. So I did, I did not say anything more than that. Okay. This is accepted, accepted by the 13th Finance Commission. Okay. Okay. And why we need mm. not go into it. Okay. But what is fiscal discipline is a matter on this there can be a debate, Absolutely. but this is the criteria which was adopted of the 12th Finance Commission. We, we reverted back to the old commission okay. after re reviewing the experience. But it is less sophisticated, more simple, more direct, backed by precedence. Okay. Next, what is important is that there is a, that what should be a fiscal rule mm. and how it should be enforced. Mm. What's the best way of enforcing? Mm. That I believe is the remit of the FFC. Okay. So therefore, what the FFC tried to say, on the basis of the experience, mm. is on the basis of general acceptance of both the union and state governments, okay. that around 3% fiscal deficit is reasonable is what the union government also was willing to accept. Mm -hmm. As far as the state governments are concerned, mm -hmm. they said 3% is okay, mm -hmm. but we want more flexibility depending on the mm -hmm. uh, revenue position of the state and the existing level of debt mm -hmm. of the state mm -hmm. and the utilization in the previous year. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we solved the problem. Mm -hmm. We fixed up certain flexibility for mm -hmm. the states mm -hmm. and we accepted the position of the center, that is 3%. Mm -hmm. Next question is enforceability. Mm -hmm. We found that it was enforceable as in the case of the state governments, mm -hmm. except there was some ambiguity about the approval of the borrowing program, mm -hmm. so that we strengthened the procedure. Okay. Now when it comes to union government, there was a problem of enforceability and therefore we suggested fiscal council. Mm -hmm. And having done that, fiscal council is an institution, but actually if are ex post, mm -hmm. The law provided for CAG, mm. but no notification has been given. Okay. So we found that there was 
less than normal expected respect okay. for the FRBM. Uh -huh. And so we went back to the Constituent Assembly mm -hmm. and felt that there may be greater legitimacy mm -hmm. if a law is passed under the Constitution mm -hmm. as originally contemplated. So that's why you feel rather than the FRBM, a new law which typically... This is only, this is okay. on the basis of the experience with regard mm -hmm. to the respect given to FRBM, in particular by the centre. Mm -hmm. So there are two things. One is fiscal council, which is a global practice, globally accepted practice. Mm -hmm. Second is our own constitution on which mm -hmm. no action has been taken for 60 years, okay. despite Dr. Ambedkar's exhortation, okay. which we have quoted. Uh -huh. so, the, so in a way, we have taken an institutional legal view of the fiscal responsibility, mm -hmm. incorporated the experience so far, and introduced the correct. Uh, so your report repeatedly talks about how the union has been far more fiscally irresponsible as compared to the I state. don't think that word has ever used. Not irresponsible, you worded it certainly better. No, but no, no, word, between the lines. no, no adjective was given, only the numbers were given. <laughs> That's true, sir. You're too careful to give and use any adjectives. But clearly what comes out is that the states have been more prudent, let me put it, than the union. Why is that so? Is it because they didn't have as much of a hard budget constraint at the union level? And unlike the states which, where the budget constraint was in terms of borrowing requirements where you have to go to the union for permission. So how, will this change once you make it into the constitutional? Mm, nothing can change. Ultimately, the parliament can change the law. Okay. So if, you, if, if, if what you are saying is mm. whether the, my, our suggestion of converting, uh, putting it at debt ceiling is going to improve the matters, I don't know. But it will not be less than what it is now, I suppose. So what kind of new institutional arrangement were you suggesting? No, the no, no, the, no, no, no. no under, not the law, sir, but there, your report also talks about the need for a new kind of institutional arrangement. That is, there are two different things. The interstate council, etc., is different from the debt ceiling. That yeah, sure, got other, yes. That's got other transfers. Hmm. That was one of the suggestions hmm. is that how do you hmm. ensure that the frictions between the union and state, which hmm. are very obvious, which hmm. has been recorded in the report, hmm. one way of solving it is, and which has been, in a way it is, it is a, a variant of NDC, okay. a National Development Council, which was not very effective. Hmm. It's a variant, it's hmm. focused on this particular issue. Okay. So you think that interstate council would, could possibly fit? Yes. And, and there is a connection with the constitution again. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is a connection with the constitution because the interstate council is it's part of the article 263. Yeah. And my recollection is it can be mm -hmm. passed through a presidential order. Okay. okay. As an additional term of reference. Okay. It's not necessary mm -hmm. that there should be law also. Okay. But whatever it is, only mm -hmm. a suggestion. These are matters of mm -hmm. detail. Mm -hmm. In principle, what is being argued is mm -hmm. that you, re you must have a more formal, more effective mechanism okay. in which both centre and states are involved. Mm -hmm. When the union government is giving money to states, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the distribution, the design mm -hmm. and the coverage mm -hmm. should be mutually agreed okay. rather than unilaterally done on mm -hmm. some principles mm -hmm. is in the interest of sound finance of the country itself okay. and sound fiscal relations. Okay. See, the, the, the most important mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. I would like to add mm -hmm. Mm. This commission has mm. taken a comprehensive view mm. Mm. of plan and non-plan. Finance commission transfers, non-finance non commission transfers. Okay. Revenue, mm. capital. Okay. So one, most comprehensive. Mm. Second, it is symmetrical between the union and states. Okay. It does not believe that union should discipline the states or the states should discipline the union. The union and states, under the constitution, they say union, distribute between the union and states and symmetrical treatment, which is again one of the complaints. So mm. we wanted to make sure of the states, mm. we wanted to make sure that we have con done the same scrutiny, same mm. diligence to union and states, recognizing that union has unique responsibilities. It's the okay. national government, yeah. it has to put the states together, mm -hmm. it has to do counter-cyclical policies, it has external obligations. So that space you think is still yes, available? Yes, yes, yes. Counter-cyclical policies, yes, yes. suppose that we have another global financial that crisis? Been, that has been, that yes. has been explained, that has okay. been explained. So there would still be space for no, the... No, no, you cannot say what, all I am saying is this has been explained and taken into account, quote okay. unquote. Whether the counter-cyclical policies can be incorporated into LA is a separate debate. Okay. That, mm -hmm. That's a separate mm -hmm. debate on which again, mm -hmm. Uh, mm. There's an issue, okay, yeah. and because there are very few laws in which they are able to incorporate uh, counter-cyclical policy in the fiscal legislation. Absolutely, absolutely. So there's an operational problem. Mm, mm. But in theory, everybody agrees. Mm, mm. But in India, that problem doesn't arise because we are in a perpetual state of fiscal consolidation. <laughs> <laughs> true, so, true. so therefore, we did have to face the problem for the next five years. From your report, is quite, no, I wouldn't say scathing, but it's fairly critical of the fact that fiscal rules by and large, and this is, not, this is true not only of India, but you know the European Union, fiscal rules by and large don't always tend to be abided by. 
So shifting to now we've moved from fiscal rules to monetary rules as it were under the monetary policy framework agreement. So uh, would we have better success with the monetary policy framework agreement which does lay out some kind of a monetary rule as it were as against fiscal rule? What chance that those rules will be abided by more any more than the fiscal rules? I, I I don't know. These are all very complicated European fiscal monetary. No, no, so you are a master. I don't want master. to comment, but um, but uh, I would agree with you. And of course, the European Union is slightly different because multiple fish can single monetary. So that's not a very uh, good example. But I think uh, at a national level, whatever we may say, uh, I would agree that there is a link between uh, fiscal. Um, policy, mm -hmm. fiscal management, and monetary management. Mm -hmm. And uh, the degrees of freedom available for monetary policy in a situation where the debt is high mm -hmm. and the fiscal deficit is a persistent problem, mm -hmm. I think it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. So that is going to, ex the, 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 the fiscal position, mm -hmm. uh, if it is not, if it, uh, it's not only 3% of government, Mm -hmm. of India, there is a state government fiscal deficit you have to add. Absolutely. So you have to get an aggregate government deficit of 3 plus 2.5, 5.4 and our GDP, a lot of it is uh, unorganized sector mm -hmm. and therefore there may be GDP but it cannot come under the tax, mm -hmm. our tax base is low, mm -hmm. already the interest rate is close to 50%, the interest mm -hmm. payments of the revenue of the central government, taxable revenue, tax mm -hmm. resources mm -hmm. are, is almost 50%. Mm -hmm. So the position is rather, uh, requires a lot of consolidation. Okay. Now, at a time when the FISC is going through the consolidation, the degrees of freedom available for monetary policy framework okay. are highly restricted. Okay. So, therefore, one has to recognize uh, how it will fan out uh, is, uh, is something hmm. that uh, one has to see. So has the Reserve Bank of India boxed itself in with an agreement which says that inflation, price stability is your primary objective and growth seems to be like almost like an afterthought, financial stability, exchange control management, it's nowhere mentioned, exchange rate management is nowhere mentioned at all. So whereas the RBI today has multiple objectives, so does it really box the RBI in if you have a monetary policy? Oh, I'm not box? still the governor of RBI. No, I don't. <laughs> that is why you can speak more freely, sir. That is no, why. No, because no, the limited point is how can I say whether the RBI said something or not? Or whether the RBI and government of India knew about it or not. No, I'm but just asking you today, saying, does the monetary policy no, arrangement no, no, framework, no, because it box the no, RBI in? No, no, does it I reduce the limits of the degrees of freedom that you were talking about? No, but in, in the subject in which I am talking now, yes, it is only in the context of the Footing Finance Commission. Absolutely. Therefore, the fiscal management is important. Yes. The way I look at it is, if the fiscal management is important and being aware of the fiscal path, fiscal consolidation path, mm -hmm. which according to all think we have been too soft, quote unquote, yes, and yes. I'll explain why we have been too soft. Mm -hmm. Being that, mm -hmm. the whole issue is, if that is given, mm -hmm. if that is given, mm -hmm. and even assuming that you stick to it, mm -hmm. the capacity, the, the, the fiscal dominance will continue. So that automatically limits the RBI's degrees mm -hmm. of freedom? The, the, I mean, the, what the monetary policy. So that's mm -hmm. all I am trying to say. Because mm -hmm. Beyond that, I can't say how it is to be handled, what mm -hmm. is being handled, what is the framework. I am not a party privy to anything. Absolutely. But, so this so purely is, as an observer, and with somebody who has actually been there, done it. No, but all I am saying is that as long as it is well handled, it will be all right. But more important, I suppose, I have to explain the uh, fiscal consolidation path. The, and you refer to it also that uh, adjustment is being postponed. What we make is a projection. Mm -hmm. It is not a fiscal rule. Absolutely. We make a projection and a desirable target which government itself has set. Mm -hmm. So our projection had to take into account two things. What the Ministry of Finance itself gives to us. Government of India says this is our best estimate. Then we may say that uh, something else is desirable. Okay. But we cannot project on the basis of desirable. We have to project on the basis of past experience and what in our best judgment the government is can be made to do or likely to do. So it is not prescriptive. Mm -hmm. It is a projection. Okay. And so and then actuals okay. always vary from the projection. So it is not that we were soft, but we that in our view and therefore if you see there is a revenue deficit in the government of India at the end of five years, even at the end of five years.
close with asking you, like you've been finance secretary, governor of the Reserve Bank of India, 14th Finance Commission chairman. Which of these was the most challenging and which was the one that you really enjoyed the most? No, I, I think um, professionally, professionally, the most satisfying was the Reserve Bank of India. I would say that uh, it's a very professional organization and it's, uh, I don't think anywhere, and I can be frank, the whole of government of India put together, I don't think can command that type of expertise. Second, it is among the best uh, central banks in the world in terms of professionalism, so I have no hesitation in saying that I learned a lot from the Reserve Bank of India, and it has been a great experience, the Reserve Bank of India. So any day, any day if I want economic advice, uh, I'll go to the uh, Reserve Bank of India. So despite the tough time that the government of India of that time gave you, you have no regrets about your... No, let me tell you. In fact, uh, I can as well mention, when somebody asked me after I completed my tenure, so what was your objective? Did you believe in single objective, inflation objective? So, no, no. I did believe in single objective. Uh, my single objective was to protect the Indian economy from government of India. <laughs> and I must also acknowledge... So inflation that targeting is the government of India is the target. <laughs> and protecting the Indian okay. economy. The target is protecting okay. India. But I also added that I must say that uh, the Prime Ministers, two Prime Ministers, I worked as Governor and the two Finance Ministers, all of them were very considerate in allowing me to protect the Indian economy from government of India. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly did that, sir, and we are grateful Thank to you, you for that. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's been you. great speaking Thank with you. you. Thank you also for watching, but we'll be back next week with yet another edition of Macros with Maithali. Till then, it's thank you and goodbye from all of us at ET Now. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.